Here's how I made this video and you can too with no skills required. Let's go. All right, so we're gonna go to Mixamo.com. This is part of the Adobe package. So log in with your Adobe account. If you don't have one, get one for a friend, start a free trial, whatever you gotta do. We'll go to browse characters and we'll find someone that we like. Maybe this big beefy guy, maybe Maria JJ. She's, that's, she'll work. Okay, we'll go to animations. And I wanna do some like a uh, walking up the stairs. That'll make a nice loop. So we'll, how about ascending stairs? That's, if that will work, all right. And we will make this like, how about a longer frame amount? Just for something longer to work with. That's good. Okay, and I don't wanna do mirror, I don't wanna do in place because it kind of pulls the character back a little bit. It's a little weird. So that's fine. We'll click download and everything here is fine. Definitely want this person to have skin, okay? It's kind of like a, serial killer thing to uncheck so we'll just download as is drop this fbx file into wherever your files are and then we will go ahead and open up blender all right so we got blender open let's go ahead and delete the default cube by clicking on it click x click delete goodbye cube we'll go to file import FBX, that's the file type that we downloaded, and we will locate our FBX file. Mine is under my stairway folder under 3D. Okay, I dropped it in. Now we have our hero here. If we click spacebar, we can play the animation. And this animation is only uh, 83 frames long. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim my current animation to that by clicking down here or clicking into this tab here, the output properties, and typing in that frame amount there just so we get a nice clean loop here. I am rotating around the scene by clicking in my mouse wheel and rotating and holding shift to pan around. All right, great. So now that we have our hero here, I forget her name, we'll call her Melinda, is uh, walking up an invisible flight of stairs. Let's actually make some stairs for her to walk up. So I'm actually going to add that cube back. Maybe we should not have uh, killed it after all. So I'll go to add mesh cube. All right, it's a good looking cube, but it's a little big. So I'm going to click on the scale button here and let's grab any of these handles and just start resizing it um, per the side that it should be for a step. So looks like that looks about the height that it should be. And then, you know, maybe a little bit short, maybe a little bit smaller, you know, let's just make it a little bit step height. All right. That could be about right here. All right. And then if you click S by itself, you can actually scale this proportionally, okay? And then I'll click the position tool and I will move this step into position like this. All right, so now we need to make more steps here. So what we're gonna do, we're not gonna make these one by one. We're going to click onto the modifier tab here and we're gonna add a modifier called array and that's going to make a bunch of duplicates. Let's make the X at zero, and then we'll make the Y at whatever is right, like this, and then make the Z a little bit higher, like that, all right? And then we'll just kind of stretch the count out to make enough steps like that, all right? And then we can kind of see how Melinda is walking up these steps. Now, as I'm seeing this, I'm like, all right, well, these are these uh, steps are a little bit big they're that way, they're a little bit too deep. All right, Let's see how she's walking. Pretty good, pretty good. All right, so maybe they just want to be a little bit touch high. No, nah, I think they're fine. You won't notice this. Definitely won't notice that. That's good. All right, they're great. So. We'll just stretch these out forever. 
that's fine. And then what I'll do is I'll probably just move this to be um, pretty far below her, just so if we want to futz around with our camera at all, um, you know, we're gonna have the, spit, the coverage on her. You know, we can go below her and not really gonna be a problem uh, like that. All right, so now we should have a good loop. Beautiful, all right, great. Stairs are good to go. All right, so now another thing I wanna do is just to make this looping easier. Instead of having her walk up the steps and snap back down, it'll just make my loop a lot easier if I actually just kind of add some simple uh, pull down to keep everything in place. Um, there might be a better way to do this, but this is pretty easy, so why not? So I'll just add a uh, an empty, a plain axis empty like this right here. And why don't I just call this um, uh, movement, whatever. And I'll grab the cube and I'll grab the armature. Why don't I go ahead and, add, and rename my armature to be uh, Melinda as well. So I'll grab Melinda. I'll grab my cube, which is the stairs, and I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to grab, drag the, grab them, drag them into the movement. All right. So now if I move the movement, it's moving both of these. We want these to move together. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, on this first frame, click I and click location and then go to the end here. Make mental note. Uh, of where certain things are. So I see her left foot on a step that is touching um, kind of this grid plane here. And then I'll scrub over to the end here where her left foot is on a block like this. And I'm going to then pull this down and over like this and kind of make that be in the same spot. And then click I again and click location. And we should basically have a loop like that. Now, right now we have easing. So what I wanna do is I wanna grab these two frames and right click them. And I want to go to interpolation mode and I wanna change this from to linear, which is gonna get rid of easing. We want this to be a steady pace. And then now, basically, this we've basically fixed, uh, created a loop here. You can see it's not perfect. So you'll go in and you'll tweak this until it looks right. You know, you can see it, it jumps a little bit right now. See if you go here to here, it's moving forward. So we just wanna go in and move this forward and then override that keyframe and then try again and now it's a little bit closer all right really close that time all right and now we basically have no loop at all and then what we'll do is we'll basically we'll just bring this in one or two more frames and that should hide the loop completely like that okay so let's add in the cameras well we already have a camera in the scene it's over here and what I like to do is also add in an empty to control the camera. This is kind of just a habit I have from doing this in After Effects. I'm gonna bring this to the center of my scene. There's probably a, a key command to do that, but which I don't know about. So I'm going to add in uh, an empty plane axes and then uh, call this uh, camera cam and then grab my camera and shift hold it onto the camera. I'll explain this a little bit why I like to use an empty uh, to control my camera. Grab this, pull it out, grab my rotation button here, spin it around, boom. And if you click this, you can kind of see where your camera is looking, but we don't really need to worry about this just yet. What I'm gonna do also is grab my light that's up here and kind of point, pull it out out and move it to somewhere where I want the camera to look at, which uh, is gonna be like above where the character is, kind of like up the stairs a little bit. So it's gonna be where the doorway is too. And then what I'll do is I'll just grab 
the camera, drop this down, grab the camera, and click on this object constraints button, and I'll click track two, and then I'll click here and just grab it onto my light. And now the camera is just staring at the light. And so now with our move our empty down and just kind of put it uh, like under the character. And now we just have a camera that looks like it's, you know, following this character and looking at it. And if we move this around, the camera is always going to be kind of following this light up in the distance. All right. All right, so now let's make a tunnel or archway or whatever you want to call it for Melinda to be walking towards. So what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and add a mesh. How about a cylinder? And I'll make this not be so deep here. And let me go ahead and just move this. Uh, actually, I'll just hide some other stuff. How about I hide Melinda and my stairs? Oops, can't hide her. I'll just move this up a little bit just so I can see it a little bit clearer. And I'm going to rotate this up like that. I'll make it a clean 90 degrees. And I'm going to click tab, uh, which puts us into edit mode. You can also go up here to go into edit mode. I'm gonna go into wireframe mode. What I wanna do is I wanna grab like the bottom half um, the reason I went into wireframe mode is that I can uh, highlight through the object, and then I'm gonna just pull this down so that it makes this kind of archway shape like this, boom, and then we can just go right back into object mode by clicking tab. Let's bring back the stairs, all right, and we'll go ahead and just put this atop the stairs somewhere that we like. We turn back on our camera, however far up the stairs we want to go does not matter this object will not be moving this is our archway this is the destination we want to go to boom let's give it a, a glowing material so i'm going to click here on our on my materials tab right here boom i'm going to click new material we'll call this glow and i'm going to add a uh, emissions like this and bring the strength up here. And I wanna make this uh, glow more, have a nice big glow. So I'm going to click onto my render properties and I'm going to click bloom. That gives this this nice big glowing effect like that. So now it's really about playing with lighting, playing with the cameras. So generally what I like to do is add two lights to a scene, at least two. So I'll put in this light that's going to be like the, the light from the source. So this will be really bright and have a big radius and really, really, this will be a really, really strong light here. Um, that's gonna shine and, ca and cast a shadow if I come in here. And uh, so really, really, you know, tweak this light. This can be whatever kind of color light you want. Maybe this has, has a yellow glow to it or something like this, but we can make this really, really strong so it's kind of casting a cool shadow. And then what I'll also do is I will add another light. So if I click this and I click Shift D, it'll bring in another light. And I like to put this other light somewhere, uh, maybe off to the side or behind the hero that adds another cool, uh, you know, kind of contrasting color, maybe like a pink. And this doesn't have to be such a um, strong light. Maybe it's half the strength or even less. Um, that just adds a little bit of more visual interest to it. Um, so we'll play around with that light too. And then we wanna get into the shading of everything. All right, so stick around for part two where we're gonna do some toon shading, some outline strokes, render it out, bring it into After Effects to add some effects after and finish it all off. All right, thank you for watching.